We're gonna start with single step conversions. And I know for some of these, you can probably do them in your head, or you can use that method where you move the decimal place over. However, I highly, highly encourage you to practice this approach because we're gonna see dimensional analysis throughout the course. And so we're gonna build on what we're learning here and wanna take it um, step by step. So practice it this way and you'll be grateful later on that you mastered this. Um, so first one, how many centimeters are in 3.50 meters? You're always gonna start with the piece of information or the number that they gave you. So I'm gonna start my setup with 3.50 meters. And then next to that, you're gonna put a fraction, your conversion factor. And we're looking to get rid of meters. We wanna convert meters to centimeters. So we want it to cancel. So I'm gonna put meters in the bottom and that way it's gonna cancel out. And I wanna convert it to centimeters, so I'll put CM in the top. Once I have that set up, I'm gonna think about this relationship. It's one of the ones I asked you to memorize. So one meter has 100 centimeters. And I always like to see what's going on with my units. So meters will cancel with meters and we'll just be left with centimeters. In my calculator, I'm gonna do 3.50 times 100, which gives me 350. And I need to include the centimeters on there. I always need to have units. The last thing we wanna look at is sig figs. And so in this first value, you have three sig figs. It's not super clear here that we have three sig figs. So we could either put a period on the end and that would make it clear that we have three sig figs, or we can do 3.50 times 10 to the second centimeters. And that would also make the three sig figs super clear. Next one, how many milliliters are in 4.75 liters? So start with the number they gave you, 4.75 liters, and you're gonna set up your conversion factor to get rid of liters. So liters will go on the bottom, and we wanna convert it to milliliters. So ML, milliliters in top. Which one is bigger? Well, a liter is bigger, right? One liter has a thousand milliliters. Check how my units are canceling. Liters cancel liters, and I'm just left with milliliters. And so when I plug this in my calculator, I get um, 4.75 times 10 to the third. I think I was in scientific notation, and then my units would be the milliliters, because that's what's left. Three sig figs here, three sig figs here. If you weren't in scientific notation and you got um, 4,750 milliliters, that would also be fine, right? This is three sig fix. This is three sig fix because um, that's just a placeholder zero. It's not significant. All right, how many kilograms are in 4,500 grams? Starting with the number they gave us, so I'll start by writing 4,500 grams. And I want to get rid of grams. So I'm going to put that in the denominator. And I want to convert to kilograms. So kilograms will go in the numerator. Then I need to figure out the relationship here. A kilogram is bigger. One kilogram contains 1,000 grams. Grams cancels with grams, leaving us with kilograms. Perfect. And so that's going to equal 0 0.45 kilograms. In my calculator, I did 4,500 4, divided by 1,000. Two sig figs here, and then I have two sig figs in my answer. And if you want to put it in scientific notation, that's fine as well. Either one, as long as the sig figs are correct. All right, the next one, the pressure unit, which might be a new one for you. But as long as you have your conversion factor, you can convert anything. I'll start with the 2.5 atmospheres. 
I'm trying to get rid of atmosphere, so I'll put that in the denominator. And I'm trying to convert it to millimeters of mercury. So I'll look up that conversion factor. One atmosphere has 760 millimeters of mercury. Always check how the units are canceling. Atmospheres will cancel the atmospheres, leaving us with millimeters of mercury. And so now we need to do 2.5 times 760 in our calculators. And when I did that, I got 1.9 times 10 to the third, and the units are gonna be millimeters of mercury. You could also report that as 1900 millimeters of mercury. Either way, it's okay because you had two sig figs here. Um, this is an exact number, so you don't have to worry about that one. Um, and so just the two sig figs in your answer. Moving on, 213 minutes. So I'll start with that value. I wanna get rid of minutes, so that'll go down below. And I wanna change it to seconds. Now this isn't one we wrote down, but hopefully um, everyone remembers that one minute has 60 seconds. So in the units, the minutes will cancel the minutes, leaving us with seconds. In our calculator, we're gonna do 213 times 60, and that gives us 1.278 times 10 to the fourth seconds. Now this one will take a second to fix, right? We just have three sig figs here. This is exact. There's exactly 60 seconds in a minute. So we're just going to worry about the three sig figs. That means this needs three sig figs. And one, two, three. So we got to end it at the seven, but the eight will bump it up. So for my final answer, I'm going to write 1.28 times 10 to the fourth seconds. And this is the correct answer after the sig figs are considered. So starting with the number they gave us, we're going to do 3.399 miles. And we were asked to convert that to kilometers. So I'm going to put miles in the denominator and kilometers in the numerator. So this is one of the conversion factors that you'll be provided with, or you can just look it up on your sheet. One mile has 1.609 kilometers. Always check how your units are canceling. And I know right now it seems kind of silly, but we're going to get to much longer problems where you're stringing together five or six conversion factors in a row. So I did 3.399 times 1.609. And when I did that, I got 5.468991 kilometers. You always have to check sig figs, always make sure you have the correct units. So here we have four sig figs, and this is a non-exact conversion. It also, in this form, only has four sig figs. So one, two, three, four. The eight is gonna be the last number I keep, but I'm gonna to wanna to round that up because of the nine. So I'm gonna do 5.469 kilometers as my final answer. On the next one, we're going to convert microseconds to seconds. So we have 6.0 times 10 to the third microseconds. I need to get rid of the microseconds. So I'll put that in the denominator and seconds in the numerator. A second is a lot bigger, so I'll put the number one with the second. And there's a million microseconds in one second. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 6 e to the third divided by 1 e to the sixth. And when we do that, we get 6.0 times 10 to the fourth 
times 10 to the negative third seconds. Now, your calculator may drop that zero, but you have to maintain that zero because you had two sig figs here, and you want to end up with two sig figs in your answer. Next one, grams to decigrams. So I'm going to start with the 22 grams. Put grams in the bottom so it cancels out. Decigrams and tops. Decigrams is uh, smaller. There's 10 decigrams in one gram. So grams cancels with grams, leaving us with decigrams. 22 times 10, that's going to give us uh, 220 decigrams. That has two sig figs, so we're good to go. But if you want it to be like just a little bit clearer, you could do 2.2 times 10 to the second decigrams. And then there'd be no doubt at all that you only had two sig figs. In number 11, we're gonna convert joules to calories. I'm gonna start with the 4,137 joules. I'm trying to get rid of joules. So I'll put it in the denominator and I'm trying to convert to calories. There's 4.184 joules in one calorie. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 4,137 divided by 4.184. That gives me, it's a super long value, lots of digits. I cut it off at some point. So I got 9.887. Six six seven times ten to the second calories, and again, I think that number continued even a little bit farther than that. Four sig figs in our starting value, four sig figs in our conversion factor. So we need to round this to four sig figs. One, two, three, four. I'm going to stop at the seven, but then the six that's right next to it would cause it to um, go up. So I'm going to do nine point eight. 8, 8 times 10 to the second calories. And if you don't want to use scientific notation on that, that's fine. You could do uh, 988.8 uh, calories. So on our next problem here, they're talking about sweet tea at a party. And a person said they made two quarts, but you need to know what that is in liters. So starting with the two quarts, and you're trying to get rid of quarts, so I'll put that in the bottom and go to liters. So on the previous page, we wrote down that one liter has 1.057 quarts. So quarts would cancel quarts and we'd be left with units of liters. Two divided by 1.057 gives us 1.8921 liters. And again, that number also goes on a little bit farther. Two quarts, one sig fig with that starting value. So we have to round this to one sig fig. So I'm gonna report my answer as two liters. And I know that's a little bit upsetting sometimes. I mean, well, it's not two liters, how can you do that? Well. Take everything in context. Sig figs, remember sig figs gives us indication or insight into how those measurements were done. I'm sure whoever made this sweet tea wasn't measuring it precisely to two quarts. They're like, eh, I got about two quarts. And in the back of your head, you might be thinking, eh, that's about two liters. Um, and at the end of the day, it's just tea. So the exact quantity isn't critical. And that's why the one sig fig is suitable. Same thing with this chicken, right? We're asked to convert two kilograms of chicken to pounds. And it, again, if you decide to move to another country or live in another country, um, you're gonna have to start getting familiar with kilograms because that's the measurement of mass um, at supermarkets around the world. So if you're gonna buy two kilograms of chicken, what would that be in pounds? So two kilograms and we're trying to get rid of kilograms and go to pounds. So we're gonna say that one kilogram has 
2.205 pounds, which results in 4.41 pounds when I do 2 times 2.205. Again, what are we talking about? We're talking about chicken, and we only had one sig fig here. So we only can report our answer to one sig fig. So in the back of our head, even though it's not that precise, not even that accurate, but if you had two kilograms of uh, chicken in the back of your head, I'm, I have about four pounds of chicken. I'll start with 519 nanometers. Getting rid of nanometers and going to meters. So one meter has one times 10 to the ninth nanometers. So I need to divide that starting number by one times 10 to the ninth. And that leaves me with 5.19 times 10 to the negative seven meters. Sig figs agree, three and three. What is the volume of a 600 cc engine in milliliters? So 600 cubic centimeters. One cubic centimeter is equivalent to one milliliter. So in the future, you don't need to set this one up unless it helps you. You can just do this one in your head because it's a one to one. So 600 cc's is equal to 600 milliliters. Convert 75 megajoules to joules. I know it's mega because it's a capital M. So megajoule is definitely the bigger of the two units and there's a million joules in one megajoule. So when I multiplied 75 times 1 times 10 to the 6, I got 7.5 times 10 to the 7 joules. And my starting number has two sig figs and my answer has two sig figs.